Uh, good morning, and I am Vijay C. Nair, a trainer from BMAX Academy. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, today I am with a wonderful, unique event, that is OET Speaking Subtest. We are going to talk about warm-up which is unique for OET. And uh, are not, uh, you can see that in uh, uh, IELTS and uh, other uh, international exam, English examinations. Well, before that, let us see what is the arrangement, uh, the time management. Uh, total, it is 19 minutes, usually in the afternoon. Unlike in the case of uh, IELTS. IELTS, the uh, whole uh, four modules, uh, LRW one day and speaking either on the previous day or the next day. But here in OET, the LRW comes in the morning, uh, uh, listening, reading, writing in the morning and speaking in the evening or after the lunch. So here in the speaking, what we call is role play. That means the candidate plays the role of the personal role, like a doctor or a dentist or a radiographer or a physiologist. And I, the examiner, or to be precise, interlocutor, plays the role of the patient or the relative. There are three steps you can say. The first one is ID checking. The examiner will ask you uh, two, three, four questions. For example, could you please tell me your full name for my verification, please? Then you are supposed to give your name as it is printed in the passport, make sure you are giving the name as it is printed in the passport. The second question is, they say, thank you. Now here, thank you means stop it and I am going to ask the next question and uh, mm, mm means go on. So he says, thank you. Could you please show me your ID? So you have to show the passport and say that, uh, well, uh, this is my passport, which I used for my registration. The third question he might ask you is, could you please tell me your candidate number? You get a candidate number along with that mission card, a five digit number, and you can say, for example, my candidate number is 210-2511. Then the last question, he wants to make sure you belong to the specific healthcare group. For example, you are taking this test as a medical doctor. Am I correct? Or you are taking this test as a radiographer. Am I correct? Or you are taking the test as a nurse. Am I correct? So that is the first part, ID checking. It lasts for maybe a minute or so. Uh, four questions. The second is unique uh, for OET alone. Here, uh, there will be an informal talk to make you cool because you are when you are in the waiting room, there is already adrenaline in your body. And the moment you enter and face the interviewer, uh, your uh, body temperature rises to 2 degrees C and uh, naturally you will be a little upset. So make you uh, cool, they uh, give you maybe some three minutes where some informal talks that is called the warm up which you might have seen while playing the football before the match starts they are exchanging something so it is a warm up session where they uh, three four maybe for three minutes and ask uh, four questions that means you have to answer two or three uh, which is not marked and they will tell it and the warm up is not marked it is uh, means to understand each other's voice familiarize with the pronunciation and voice that's all and you can give any and answer as long as it because it is not uh, evaluated but uh, in bmax we give uh, a maximum importance for a uh, warm up because it is a way to influence your uh, fluency to improve your fluency you can surge your fluency daily you spend some 20 minutes on some medical or non medical subject and uh, practice it speaking and thus you can develop your fluency so there they may ask uh, usually four questions uh, could you please tell me why do you take oet why do you take OET? That usually is the first question. Second, if you are a dentist, they ask you, why did you want to become a dentist? The third question is, uh, what are the qualities of a dentist? Then they may say, you may, you can give two, three qualities of a good dentist. Then they ask, uh, thank you for giving this, um, a long list of the qualities of a dentist. Now, could you please tell me, what is the one quality that makes you a good dentist? So that's all. Or in the, uh, with the other student, they may have uh, for this today, we'll be taking dentist for example dentist specialist and uh, i have with me dr rejita a dentist so i'll be asking her question as an interlocutor and uh, she'll be giving her answer that is a model answer or what you can tell as an answer this is mind you only for dentist now we'll spend some uh, two to three minutes on warm-up. Warm-up sessions are not usually marked now it is to understand each other's voice are you ready thank you now, Dr. Rajita, could you please tell me, why do you take OET? Well, it's my long-term ambition to pursue my higher studies as well as to work as a registered dentist in the UK. In order to meet the requirements, I need to prove my English language proficiency. 
so i choose oit to fulfill my dreams moreover oit is tailored according to the needs of healthcare professionals thank you now dr rajita could you please tell me what are the qualities of a good dentist there are several qualities of being a good dentist some of them are as follows they are compassion knowledge communication skills technological updation attention to detail manual dexterity and flexibility uh, thank you for giving me a long list of the qualities of a dentist now dr rajita could you please tell me about an equipment that you use daily in your workplace the equipment which i use daily in my workplace is mouth mirror it's a part of a diagnostic instrument it constitutes a head and a handle the head may constitute a round mirror it may be plain convex or concave based on the variation or the types they provide it is used to examine the oral cavity and also it helps in retraction of the cheeks lips and tongue and it also provides indirect illumination in cases of inaccessible areas thank you and see that we are all human beings we make mistakes however when a medical professional makes a mistake it is death uh, could you please tell me about a medical error you have committed and how did you manage it well i remember vividly our professor was telling us once that a error caused by a doctor can cause death thank god i haven't caused any errors till the date except the one during my internship i made a mistake in the administration of a medication however i detected a error soon and informed my seniors and it was resolved before the calamities occurred this experience taught me a lesson that being vigilant and double check will only help us to reduce this medical errors Thank you. And Dr. Rajita, we all have role models. Could you please tell me about your role model? My role model in the industry is Dr. George Alex Matthew Murupal, who is a principal of our college as well as the prosthodontist and implantologist. He is a well experienced person and he provides lectures based on his experience. Being an BDS graduate, it's very difficult for us to place an implant, but with the influence of him, we place an implant in a patient and that make me to think him as a role model. Now, Dr. Rajita After leaving your dental school a lot of changes have come in the field of dentistry could you please tell me uh, how do you update yourself well i update myself by reading newspaper it helps me to know what is happening around me and i also update by means of reading articles from the website like indian dental association which helps me to know the recently advanced materials and equipments and the use of it in dentistry and i attend a webinars which helps me to know the various steps and procedures that are very useful in treating a patients and helps me to implement those in my practice thank you after leaving your dental school a lot of changes have come in the field of dentistry now could you please tell me uh, about a course that you have taken uh, in order to fill the gap well the course i have recently studied is fellowship in endodontics it is a 3 month course which was provided by dr benin polayan the endodontist he helped us to improve our ability and efficiency in root canal procedures and also the management of errors in the procedures <laughs>